Let's face it, as Nintendo fans, we are often left slightly disappointed and scratching our heads asking why. Where is our Super Mario Galaxy 3? Why isn't Metroid out yet? Bring back the Ice Climber seriously, and what were you thinking with the Virtual Boy? Well, sit back as Sean Capri and Bobby Pauls do just that. That's right, this is If We Ran Nintendo. Now, cue the music, maestro. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 34 of If We Ran Nintendo. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, joined by the greatest co-host in all of podcasting. Sean Hi, Bobby. Up, Sean? How are? I, I, nothing. I, I I thought you were going to ask about me joining in with you on these intros. If you watch the video, you know that I mouth along with Bobby. And I don't look just, at you. I, I can't look a, at you because you know. The cadence is always just so excellent, and all I want to do is just join in with you in the celebration. I know that the music is happening, and we're yeah. kind of fading a little yeah. bit, and it's all magical, and it's a nice it's a nice little day to drink a coffee and, and run a company like Nintendo with you, Bobby. I'm not worried about that. I want to talk about Bobby Capri. Let's talk about Bobby okay. Capri. Okay, yep. Yeah, Bobby, Bobby is a front runner. Actually, Ricky Bobby is a front runner <laughs> for Bobby, Ricky Bobby, first place Capri is uh, a front runner for what will be our baby boy yes. in April. We've yes. discovered we're having a boy. Congratulations. The, the inside of the question block cake that we had was was blue and Bobby. This is hilarious. Okay, so Chelsea asked the the baker to, to make us this cake, and I didn't realize this until after the fact. She said, if it's a boy, so we gave the envelope from the Ultra Sound mm-hmm. Tech. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she, knows. she was the only one who knew. said, if it's a boy... Um, blue and red icing, like Mario, like yeah, Mario's yeah, yeah, like yeah. jump kind of thing. And she said, if it's a if it's a girl, pink and uh, pink and yellow, like Peach. Yeah. So as we're cutting the cake, like I can't even I can't even bear it. I I've got my hands in front of my face. I don't even like I can't take it. I am <laughs> I am I've been convinced it's a boy for a long long time. Like yeah. Chelsea had a checkup a while ago. And the doctor said, I think it just felt a kick. That's kind of early. And I'm like, that's a strong boy in there. <laughs> and I knew from that moment I've been convinced it's a boy. Almost to the point where if it was a girl, I might have been disappointed. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So, so here's the I thing. I get that's it. Like, I get it. But I wouldn't have been. like. Yeah, no, I, 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 was say, I was joking all last night saying, as long as it's a healthy cake, that's all I really care about. <laughs> as long as the cake is okay. Um, so Chelsea's cutting into it. And she makes the first cut. You can't see anything into it. The icing is so thick. But as she brings the the knife back up to make the second cut, part of the inside of the, from the first cut starts to layer on top of the cake, and it's pink. And we both went, "Oh!" But like, <laughs> like, <laughs> but then she cuts into it to reveal that it's blue and red inside, and the and the red showed up sort of pink, pink. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. So we did have a moment where like. Oh no! And then, oh, not, no, oh come no, on, like, <laughs> come on! <laughs> That's terrible. horrible. But it was pretty. It was like the best, like surprise ever because the cake kind of fooled us a yeah. little. Bit. <laughs> That's amazing. So it was great, and um, yeah, we had a bunch of family over. Actually, when the cake was delivered, uh, the person who made it dropped it off, and she's like, "I just want to be really careful with it. I just need to like, I, I spent so much time on it. And she puts it on the counter." And she didn't realize that in the giant box, the tiny little cake had shifted to the front, and the box fell over. She oh. dropped the cake oh my <laughs> on God. the ground. But whatever, I don't even know, bakers out there will know, the, the thing that's on the outside, it's really hard. Fondant. It's, really hard. it's called, it's called yeah, fondant. I guess, it, I guess it was fondant. I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's called fondant. Oh, you know. Yeah. You're like a... Uh, yeah. I'm a 600-pound gorilla, man. Of course I know what the, no, the cake tastes like. <laughs> like cakes and flowers. And... No, no, no. I no. mean, we don't like do a... cakes. We just do flowers, Why man. Do you do just I just, I just know cars. because when I got married in Disney, it was like a big thing because I just wanted a regular cake, like a mm-hmm. Duncan Hines box cake. And Tony mm-hmm. was like, no, no, no. It's got to be like fondant. And, and I'm like, I don't want fondant. I just want a be- Duncan Hines, man. Betty Crocker. That's all I want. But, put a lot of emphasis on the dond. Fondant. We would say we would say fondant. 
No, we, far, let, let's call the listeners. Fondant. Okay. So, so this ice, this this uh, casing around the cake, this fondant, was like a hockey helmet because yeah, it smashed on the ground. Totally fine. Yeah, it's hard. I thought we were, and this was the thing I was starting to question. My, it's a boy. I thought I was going to go look over. I realized in a moment I was going to look over. I thought I was going to see a pink mess. But oh, it wasn't. okay. No mess, no nothing. That's Everything awesome. was fine. It was great. So That's we're having awesome. a boy. And, Bobby, I, and, and, I, and, I, and I love the fact that, like, Chelsea did all these decorations and stuff. Oh, and dude. it's all, like, Nintendo-themed and just amazing. And she did a really great job. She really did. She is something else. Yeah. You you, you, you picked the winner there. Well, you sure lucked did. out. You lucked out. I definitely lucked out, let's she, be honest. She accepted your stupidity into her life, and, and that's a good thing. She is awesome. I mean, we had a we had a Mario Peach themed gender reveal party with a question block cake and all this stuff, and she's right here. That's awesome. And then we finished the night um, playing Borderlands. That's amazing. Say hi on the podcast. We're just saying how awesome you are. We're recording video as well. Is that a hint? They don't look right. <laughs> I'm just working. <laughs> I just woke up. I know. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, honey. That are was, you eating cake? That was Chelsea Capri. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the funny thing was, was she she messaged me. I don't even know what day she messaged me. Yesterday, yesterday or in the afternoon. My days are all running together because I've been working like a madman. And I know what she said. She messaged me. She's like, my family isn't really going to appreciate <laughs> this, so I needed to show you so I could show it to somebody that would really truly appreciate it. And I'm freaking out. I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever, man. And then like. What did it for me was when she showed me the question block block cake. I was like, how perfect is this? It is, uh, for a Nintendo theme, like, that is the perfect way. Because you're like, what is it? And it's like when you run up to a Mario block, like, what's in that block? Is it a mushroom? (laughs) Is it a coin? Is it, you know, and it's like, just perfect, man. I loved it. I loved it. You You made her realize. She didn't realize that until you said that. She was just like looking up Mario-themed cakes and like, yeah, question block, that's easy because it's a square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She didn't think of it as like, for the whole gender reveal, what's inside. Yeah. And I'm like, you told her that. I was thinking that she was thinking that the whole time. So that was, thank you for letting her realize. (laughs) That was amazing. It was amazing. It was awesome, man. We're all so very happy. Yeah, My mom cried. It was a whole thing. That's amazing. That is so... That's epic, dude. That's really. I'm really happy for you guys. I I yep, said yep. to her yesterday, I was like, "Man, I wish I could be there," and she's like, "Oh, we uh, wish you could be here too." That would have been, you know, it's it. That's the only thing that stinks about being like, because I feel like we're family. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. I don't feel like we're friends. I feel like we're mm-hmm. we're kind of like that. I feel the same way with Toby and all that stuff, like in Mark, and because we we spend so much time talking to each other anymore, and it's like things like this. It's like I feel like I'm part of it. But it stinks because you're not there. You know what I mean? It's like, I would love to just jump in the car and, and cruise over and be like, oh, I'm going to be here. This is going to be awesome. You know what I mean? But it's just, dude, it was so cool. It was so yeah, amazing. I don't talk to my parents once a week for an hour. I, dude, I don't talk to my I talk to my dad. Like, <laughs> it takes a while. Like, my mom yells at me all the time. Like, you need to call more. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm, calm down. Mm-hmm. You know? Can we record and put it on the internet? Because yeah. otherwise, what's the Otherwise, problem? I'm not going to do it, Mom. Yeah, and exactly. I, and so, the funny thing was, like, show notes. yeah, I started, I started to do that with my dad a little bit. We, were, we we started, like, a, a video series together, and we only mm-hmm. did it, like, we did one episode, and me and my dad, everybody knows me, I can't shut up, and my dad's just as bad, and we were supposed to be, like, a 15-minute video turned into <laughs> 45 minutes long, talking about Batman, and it was, like, just out That's of control, awesome. and... and we just never did another episode after that. And I broke it down into three episodes. It got me like three episodes worth of stuff, but mm-hmm. one day we'll go back at it. And, the only and, way it'd work is if you guys talked at the same time yeah. and then you'd just get everything you needed to say all yeah. at once. You got a 15 minute episode, just two tracks running at the same time. I would, I, I would love to get him to talk video games with me one time. Mm-hmm. He, he's not a huge video game player at all. But there's a couple, there's two memories that I have vividly with my dad. And one was when we had the Atari 2600. Mm-hmm. And there was a baseball game on that that we would play every single night. And then I remember my dad was just, I guess he was tired of playing it. Because every night he'd come home and go, Dad, let's play baseball. Let's play baseball. And one night he comes home and he's like, Let's do a World Series. This is nice. it. 
We're gonna see who's the best player ever. We're gonna do <laughs> we're gonna do a seven game best of seven World Series, mm-hmm. and over the next seven nights, we we played a World Series. Went to the final game. I beat him, and I was like ecstatic. And that was it. He he didn't play like he never played again with me. Um, he was always I very, love he was always I love busy, that but, though. You know what the best part about that is, Bobby, is that those modes weren't in those games. No, we you, had to make like, that up. Your dad, your dad had the idea of just like let's do a, like a World Series yeah. outside of any like everybody else just played the game. Played the game, but but I feel like if you were really excited about it, because I remember doing the same thing with like Blades of Steel yeah, on NES. Yeah, like, absolutely. Uh, but there's no modes; it had to be built in later. So yeah, yeah I love it. Was always the the most encouragable, most excitable people who came up with let's do this oh. type of tournament Dude, or whatever. I had my best friend. Dave Maxwell, growing up, we would play Nintendo every single day. And I talk about it numerous times. Like I talk about, I've talked about, I think on your show one time where I talked about Mm -hmm. where his, his dad would do like, we, we'd go to school and his dad worked nights and he would draw Zelda maps. We come home and we would see like part of the dungeon that he started and we grab it and finish and we would add on to it. And we go to school the next day and he'd finish off the map and, same thing with like how do you beat King Hippo? Like he beat King Hippo before we did. And he told us the mm-hmm. technique to do it and just some cool stuff like that. But Dave and I would play baseball all the time because when we when I was growing up, baseball was the sport. It was bigger mm-hmm. than football. It was America's national pastime. Like that was it. Like so we would play games like um, you know different baseball games on the NES, and we would have a notebook and keep stats. We were That's keeping awesome. stats before See? they did. And then baseball mm-hmm. stars comes out and it's keeping stats and it's doing all this stuff. And it was like, this is amazing. You know, and mm-hmm. that's what, you know, it was the pre prelim. But the other thing real quick with my dad, I remember when I got my Super Nintendo for Christmas one year and my dad was very heavy. When I was growing up, my dad was very heavily into local politics. Um, he was on like the planning boards, he was in construction. So he had that foresight and that knowledge of like how businesses and how cities are run and all that. And I got Sim City. I knew it. For it. I love it. So I, I go to his house and we start building a city mm-hmm. and we played for, I think five hours That's and awesome. I would build and he would tell me what to build. Mm-hmm. So then we're sitting there and we're building. He'd look and he goes, "Okay, go look at the what the citizens are saying." And I would look, but he knew if they're saying this, this is what we need to build to help that. And he would just, and we had this city. You know, it was crazy. It was in, it was the best city I ever built because whenever I built, I didn't know what they were talking about, or I yeah, didn't know how to sure. fix things. And he was like, "No, no, no, you got to do this. This is how you do it." And we were like, "It was amazing, just amazing." So. That's my two my two stories about my dad. So there's unfortunately there are no uh, video games about fundraising. So my dad and I never had a moment <laughs> like that. <laughs> he worked at the Boys and Girls Club growing up, so there was nothing like that. No no games about like the closest thing maybe um, Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> oh good God, you're messed up. You're messed up. Um. So let's kick this episode off like we do each and every episode with our shout outs. Geek outs. Wrong show, Sean. Um, you know what? I, I said that and I'm thinking like, what, what who shout outs do I have? I, I, I had them and my mind just went blank as I said it. Um, wow. I want to give a shout out to Dave Moore again. Go ahead. Did we talk about his show last week? I, it was a bit of a, a blur. Shelved and, and Forgotten I'm going to give a shout out to because all they do is talk about me on the show. Oh, um, but other than that, so it might, <laughs> it might, be, it might be a little biased. <laughs> But it's like, yeah, and then Sean did this, and then Bobby did this. Like they talk about both of us, actually. I so haven't, Johnny, Johnny I haven't even, uh, and, and, and Dave Moore. Sadly, I haven't pretty, listened to yeah. it yet. I promise yeah. I will listen to it this week. It's good I, man, I, I swear I'll listen to it this week. Um, <clears throat> I, I really, you know, like I said, I've been working like a madman this past week, and we're in holiday mood, so I am like, it's a blur. It's all blur. I, I'm working. Yeah. It's I signed off work until eight thirty at night. I put in 12, 14 hour days. It's just madness. Like I come and home and I'm like, these videos are getting thousands of views, buddy. Oh, dude, that video. It's amazing. That video. It's amazing. Was, oh God. That video is like, man, I, you know, when a video does good, it just really makes me happy. And yeah. it makes me happy because like I put time and effort into this stuff. And 
I do it because I love it and I enjoy talking about Nintendo, obviously. But like when something grabs and takes off like that, I just go, what is going on? Like, this is amazing, mm-hmm. you know, and that people are commenting and, you know, and, and it's it's funny. You know, it, it just it just amazes me how, how much people are, are gravitating to them videos and doing a good job. But um, but I know when you put out something that um, you care about a lot and you put a lot of work into and people dig it, that it means a lot. Yeah. Which is why I wanted to give a shout out to Dave Moore. Yeah. Uh, he he just puts out so much stuff. Dayspace.com, and it's good. Like it's really yeah. good. Even um, I'll do my second shout out to the Nintendo Dads. I was on their show just this past week. I put. Uh, can I spoil this? I'm gonna. We talked about the top ten Wii U games. They do the thing that you you yeah. have heard on like NVC. It's where not they, really they spoiling it. I mean, they, their their episode already aired. We're just gonna air. That's true. This week, uh, so so I put. Shovel Knight into the number two spot. I got Devil's Third out. I'm sorry to Barry Dunn. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Thank God you did that. Sorry, man. No, don't be sorry. You put it in there at number two. I'm like, well, I, I don't really want to undo this whole thing. Just oh, put I was Super glad Mario you Maker did it. Back in there. Well, I wanted to I wanted to do a little different take. So <laughs> shout out to the Nintendo dads. Shout out to Justin Masson and Zach Erickson, Jesse Waldack for having me on. I had so much fun. Like you literally just hang out you just sit sit around and you're like well i'm gonna block off three hours of my yeah, <laughs> that is the one that. thing that that yeah. show is rough i need to take off the next day if i'm gonna be on that show again because it's I, don't get me wrong i'm i love the show i love being on it but it's like next thing you know you look up and it's like holy crap two hours are going by already and it's like you don't even realize it zipped by that quick I knew what I was getting into this time, or this was the second time yeah. I've been lucky enough to be on the show. So I kind of knew ahead of time. So it was nice. I knew that I wasn't going to be like yeah. getting an hour and a half in, tr- looking at the door, looking at the clock, kind of trying yeah. to get out. So yeah. big shout out to, and the reason I bring up Nintendo Dads is because Justin Mastin also said, hey man, have you listened to Sheldon Forgotten? Like, it's really good. Yeah, so, check it out. Yeah, man. It's, it, they, they tackle um, <clears throat> like generally like one major topic, and then they just talk about video games. But the major topic always surrounds an old game. Like, it's talking about the backlog, which definitely is uh, one of my passions, talking about backlogs. I was, like, talking about the past and living in the past, apparently. So that's that that show is is right for me, that's for sure. It's If I were to do yet another show, it would be like that. And I'm glad that these guys are doing it because it's I need that in my life. I just subscribe now. So I'll listen. They got three episodes up, and I'll definitely check it out. Um, <clears throat> my shout-out, I came back to me as you were talking. This one is is someone that, man, I would be lost without this guy, seriously. Well, and I'm it's right and, here. And, and, no, it's not you. And oh. it's not just it's just not just a shout out. It's a thank you to Greg Caldwell. This guy, You're man, here. When, when I tell you, for those who don't know, he's in he's in the Nintendo Voice Chat um, Facebook group, but he's also in the Nintendo Guru Facebook mm-hmm. group. And when I tell you. He is consistently on top of every single news bit, everything. Like he's posting it, links and all that. And, I, and listen, there's times where I'll give him a hard time when he when he like posts a leak from from you know the the leakers, the famous Twitter leakers. Um, I'll break you know I'll break his stones a little bit about it. But like, I love the guy seriously. Like Greg, thank you so much for all you do. Like man, you are a godsend and. I don't have the time to like scour and, and put stuff up and all that. And he does. And he just, he doesn't, he's doing it cause he loves it and he loves to mm-hmm. do it. And, and I Clearly. love that he does it, man, because yep. there's times I forget things are happening and he posts something. I'm like, Oh my God, that's, that's right. I got to go, you know? And so dude, seriously, thank you so, so much. Um, you, you, I, I would seriously, I'd be lost without you in that group. So I'm so happy you're there. And he, he listens to the show, he listens to all the shows that I do, and he's always a big supporter, and, and that means the world to me, dude. Like, I, I cannot thank you enough, and I will find a way to pay you back, I assure you. There will be a, there will come a time that I will do something for you that will hopefully make it worth your while. <clears throat> do you know where in the world he is? Is he's, he close by to you? I don't know if he's close by to me. I don't know exactly where he is. I know he's in the United States, but I don't know where exactly. Um, anyway, I was just looking, yeah, 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 man. <clears throat> well, because we are going to be meeting, oh, yeah, in New York next week, yeah, in New York, yes. which is next week. I feel like that's it is. What the yeah, heck? It's next week, man. I pack my bags next Sunday. Oh, it's gonna be 
awesome. I can't believe this. So this gonna we be... were going to be doing videos. We got. Yes. Uh, I still want to do a live episode How are right we from do this, Nintendo man? World. Do you think they would let us do that? Honestly, I feel like what we could do is just walk around the Nintendo store and wear like a a headset uh-huh. and record on each of our audio? phones. Like each, yeah, one track of audio per phone, and then you can go smash that together. And it would look like we're either just talking to each other or like talking on the phone, like that a like a person cool. with a headset. And we just walk around, just do it that Dude, way. Dude, that Hopefully. might be I mean, a if, good idea. We if might it sounds try that. great, then if it sounds good, then use it. If it not, then like we, we just can do a test. And spend see an how hour. Like... In Nintendo World together. Like, ah, dude, that'd be awesome. I'm down with it. So, all right, let's jump into our first topic, shall we? So this one okay. comes from a good friend, Mason McNair, creator of Mason. Amiglos. If you haven't checked out his stuff, please go check him out. He's on Instagram. He's on Twitter. He's got a Facebook page. He just does amazing stuff. Um, he basically takes your Amiibo, and when you put them to the NFC chip reader, whatever, it glows, and it, it lights up. So really cool stuff. Um, so he says with switch coming, it's an obvious replacement for the 3ds. I agree. If we ran Nintendo, how would you transition staple 3ds games, Pokemon, Animal Crossing, Street Pass, Fire Emblem over to the switch? Um, so Nintendo's in denial a little bit. Like they're basically saying like, this isn't a replacement to the 3ds. (laughs) I think it's. <clears throat> I think it's more or less they're in a situation where it can't be a replacement to both consoles. If it is, they could if if Switch fails, which I don't believe it will, but if it were to fail, they would be in serious trouble. Mm-hmm. Obviously it's a replacement to the Wii U because the Wii U is stopping production, they're moving forward. The three DS it's a little different ball game. Um, I don't feel like in the beginning it is a replacement because they still have more games coming later throughout the year for the 3DS. Um, that said, though, I feel like it's a definite no-brainer mm-hmm. to be a replacement at some point. Um, and I feel like, depending on the sales of this thing, whether or not it actually becomes a true replacement or not, or if they later put out a, a dedicated handheld, it's all de- all based upon the success of the Switch. I think it'd be in their best interest to definitely just focus on one console rather than two mm-hmm. um, because they would be able to crank out more games. And I think it also depends upon the third-party support. If they're getting a lot of third-party support for the Switch, then they really don't have to focus on one console. They can go back to focusing on two and making quality games on both. But I feel like it's a waste of time in my mind. Mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. just put everything on the one console, push it hard, do a good job with it, you know, like I know that they can do. I feel like their best days were when they had like the Nintendo and the the uh, Super Nintendo. Game Boy came in the middle there, but it was always like the Game Boy games were kind of like an afterthought. They weren't necessarily like top tier games. There's some good Game Boy games out there. Don't get me wrong, but it didn't feel like they were like these big productions like 3DS games feel like now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. But there are games that are typically dedicated handheld games. And the games that are typically dedicated handheld games that either started that way and stayed that way or kind of drifted that way and and that are that way now are kind of where he's at with these. Pokemon has always been a handheld game. Now, we did just get a rumor this week saying that Pokemon Stars would Mm -hmm. be the the game that's going to hit Switch and it's basically you, an iteration of you know Sun and Moon. Do you believe it? I do. I believe it. I time. do believe it. I do believe. I don't know that I believe the name, but I definitely believe it's going to happen. Um, that's a good point. Everybody was saying that it's it's like makes a lot of sense. It's like, well, that's really what the sun is. What about yeah. the moon? Well, but you know what the thing of it is is like the best that I heard. The best name that I heard, and I can't remember if it was Gregory or Bennett from the group. Planetary Objects. No, they said called Eclipse. Oh, that is that is really that's good. That's a really good name. That's all. That's an amazing name. You know, because the two oh, kind of I love merging. it. Yeah, yes, of course. It that's sounds the, epic. That's the one name that I heard that when I when I heard it, I thought, oh god, 
that would be amazing. But I don't know. Um, I mean, stars make sense, but I just don't know that they got that. I, I think that that could be the phase one. Phase two would be in three years, four years, a dedicated Pokemon game hits. Because this thing is portable, you get the best of both worlds. So you're basically giving people more of an HD game, which I think people have been screaming for, for years Mm -hmm. for Pokemon. And the fact that they can still take it on the road and play mobily um, and on the go, which I think Pokemon has always wanted this to be, this franchise to be. A game like Animal Crossing, I feel like has always been... For me, it's always been preferable on the home console. Well, that's the whole thing about New Leaf was that it was such a revelation for people yes. that I can take this thing on the go, I can play it wherever I want, that people start to think of Animal Crossing as the handheld game. Yes. But of course, we know that we've been playing Animal Crossing on like on consoles for a very, yeah. very long time. Yes. So, But that's – I just think that um, the, like this game being included in this list speaks to just how perfect – New Leaf was on the handheld. It's like, well, how would you transition back? Well, it was there. So I don't know if there's, if there's much to do there really. I think that, I think that why New Leaf was such a big success was this. When you went from the GameCube version and you went to the DS version, Mm -hmm. Wild World was such an inferior game in terms of like the way it looked, the way it Mm -hmm. felt and playing on a very small, tiny screen. New Leaf had the benefit of, A, a better system, which could crank out better graphics, that could crank out Wii, Wii graphics, um, and essentially, it just looked and felt better than mm-hmm. even the Wii version. So, and it's funny, because we just talked about this a little bit on, on the GeekCast a little while ago when I was recording that, but, but the, the idea was, for me, it was... You had the GameCube version, which was always, to me, the best version, until you got the New Leaf. New Leaf, to me, is the best, because they took the best parts of all the games and threw them in the New Leaf. Mm -hmm. So, for me, I felt like, when you went to Wild World, Wild World was probably very successful over the GameCube, because it was the first time people got mobile, but you also got, like, it was such a cheap way to get into gaming, for kids and stuff that like that mm-hmm. game, a lot of kids played that game. When you went to City Folk on the Wii, you basically just took a port of Wild World and added a city to it, and that's all it was. There was no drastic difference between the two. So to me, I felt like that's why City Folk might have not have sold as well as Wild World did. With New Leaf, it was such a change, and with the 3D, because to me that was the best iteration of a 3D game, was that game, because it mm-hmm. wasn't fast moving, it was slow moving, and you could see the trees and everything, and it gave you depth and all that, so I just felt like there was so much going for it, plus you had a huge install base that it just sold like crazy, so how does it go back? Well, you couldn't find that, and it wasn't like artificial scarcity either i remember chelsea saying we need to pre-order this thing and we missed it and we tried like we were looking everywhere for that game yeah couldn't find it that's nuts yeah so going back to going back to console then or like treating it like a console is there is there something specific about animal crossing do you think that needs to maybe get a little bigger i'm not even sure like what what we what we would be missing in Animal Crossing to enjoy it as a as a console experience and then being able to take it on the go. I just feel like they could do they can make the town bigger, mm. you know. And mm. I also feel like HD like graphics, do you start to butt up against like Sim City type of stuff here. Like no no no, 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 no I wouldn't go that deal. far. I wouldn't go that okay. far. But maybe what I would do is make it like you looked at the at the track the, the Animal Crossing track in in Mario Kart, and that game that track just made me want an HD game so badly. Because when you looked at it, you went, boom, there it is. And I think that's the key to all of this. Mm -hmm. The ability to take an HD game on the road with you, on the go with you. And I think that's the selling point to all of this. We're going to take these games that have predominantly been handheld games, and we're going to give them this amazing HD polish. Mm -hmm. And we're going to basically just blow it up. I think... The answer for Pokemon 
I think it's you, you move away from the cartoony feel of the page. Oh, wow. That's significant. That's not just a... I think it's a big move. And I think you go with more of a, a Disney Pixar feel to it. Hmm. You know, even give, of the same. So the next, like, not just the stars. Version, not this stars version. Like this yeah, is the stars similar. version. Just a port. It's going to be very gotcha. close to that. I'm saying three, four, five years down the road, when you bring the next mm-hmm. Pokemon game, you make it feel like these are more realistic looking creatures. You know, when you looked at the the Pokemon Go commercial, the original commercial, when you look at the 20th anniversary of Pokemon commercial that they did, that they mm-hmm. that they aired during the Super Bowl, you take those creatures. And you put them in a game. And I think people would go, wow, because this is what, in my mind, in my mind's eye, this is what I always imagined a Charizard looking like, a, a, you know, a Pikachu looking like. Like all these characters that are more realistic feel to them, do that for one game and see how it works. Because you have the ability, because the Switch is more powerful than the 3DS or any other handhelds that they ever did. So you're able to do that and then bring it back. I think the same thing with Animal Crossing. You give that HD feel to it. You know, you look at, like, what they did with, again, the Mario Kart 8 track. You look at that and you go, okay, we're going to take this. We're going to have different levels, you know, different different levels in the town. Like, and what I mean by levels is, like, different plateaus, like, different heights. Yeah, of, like, little like, verticality to yes, the whole thing. Yeah, like, you, so it's you not raise just like it a... up. Yeah, it's just not a mm-hmm. flat world. It's, it's yeah. just not a flat town. You have... You can go up. Like when you think about Animal Crossing, you go, the beach is down low and then the town is up high. Do right. more of that. Like maybe go up to a third level. Like maybe you have stuff in the mountains where you can put houses up in the mountains. Oh, I like that a like lot. That. that makes me want to shift the perspective or have the ability to shift the perspective from the kind of like top down kind of isometric view. Mm-hmm. Like what if you could like bring it right down to an almost like over the shoulder type of thing or even yeah. like a first person. Yeah. Uh, but just camera options, just like in a racing game where you yeah. just have like right behind the car or in the yep. cockpit. Um, like if you had this big, enormous town and you could just like wander around in it in the first person or, or very close behind the third person, I think that would just add to, wow, I'm really here and I just want to explore this space. The big one for me out of all these is Fire Emblem because Fire Emblem, again, that's a game that did both. It did consoles. Mm -hmm. There's only one game. There's only two games that he lists here, Street Pass and Pokemon that have been strictly handheld. Mm -hmm. Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem kind of shifted the, the 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 territories that they went in the early goings fire emblem was very heavily on like you know super nintendo and all that stuff like on consoles i don't know about super nintendo i think it was a uh, n64 the first one um but they they had home console versions they had handheld versions same thing with with animal crossing but i feel like this game is already the epic like, this game should be on a home console as it is. Like, you could build... like Look, it, they don't cut anything out of a Fire Emblem game. The soundtrack is always phenomenal. Mm-hmm. The storylines are always amazing. The only difference is the graphics of the battle system. Exactly, yeah. The cutscenes, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Dude, th- the last Fire, Fire Emblem Fates, I felt, was amazing. Like, I loved... The cutscenes, the storyline, like it was full on voice acted, just amazing stuff. I want more of that. But maybe, mm-hmm. maybe what you do is like you you just make the overworld look a little more. I want to say Super Mario RPG ish. Okay, where you have that fine tuned, you know, rendering to the graphics. Mm-hmm. Like I think that's mm-hmm. what you do is you take everything and you give that HD polish to it and just yeah, make you- it look better. You end up getting a little closer to all the characters too. I, like when I think of Fire Emblem, like you, the battle is so far away. You just end up with these tiny little sprites. But I was playing XCOM two a couple weeks ago, and I was like, man, this is gorgeous. Like this is really the way turn-based games should be and look and feel. Like the interactions that the characters have and and the way that it all plays out looks incredible. I would love that yeah. same sort of like three D rendering of the characters just to give you that. Because the game is all about loving the characters and getting to know them. They're all very different. They all have very identifiable characteristics. And then you get into the battle, and it's like, well, now he's a sprite kind of thing. Yeah. And their, their face shows up. Like, the, the, the drawing of them shows up, and they do their thing. Yeah. Um, but if I was, like, right there with them as they're screaming in pain or, or celebrating in victory, 
that would just make me that much closer to these characters and feel that much more <laughs> like when when things go badly and one of these characters die like i should be right there with them so you start to hammer in on it's not just about it i guess what i'm trying to say it's not just about better graphics yeah it's about like leaning into like what makes fire emblem so great it is the character so let's get close to them when when they have their highs and their lows and that just i think is going to enhance the ex- entire experience more than just a nice facelift i agree i agree completely with that and mm. I, I think that you know I just think that they could do a lot with it. And I think that, oh, man. you know, I just think that the ability that you have a more powerful console, both on the go and at home, just adds to the what they could actually do to these games. No mm-hmm. doubt about it. So I think that's what we, I think that to wrap this up, I think that's where we go. We just say like, we give it that, that HD polish. We give it the more finished because you're because the, you have the ability to take these home console games on the road with us. That's what you do. You treat it like mm-hmm. a home console. You don't treat it like an inferior, dumbed down handheld version. You just come with bigger, huge things. I think that. But the thing is about I think we're discovering about these games is that they're not like they, I feel like if we were. Um, at the stage at the DS stage we would be adding features but like these are these are big they've got lots of they got lots of modes like you look at smash on on 3ds and smash on wii u like nobody's saying man i wish i had more to do on smash and 3ds i know you know what i mean like so i think we're at a point we're very lucky and maybe this is just a nice little chance to recognize all that we've been able to do on 3ds and go Yeah. yeah just if I could just put that on a big screen, I'm mostly happy. Just give it a little power boost. Exactly. But nobody's really looking for more to do. No. I don't think on on most of these games. I think the 3ds, it's a it's a very powerful console. You mm-hmm. know, I really do. I mean, you're looking at what they're doing right now, where they're taking Yoshi's Woolly World and they're throwing it down there, taking Mario Maker, which isn't a big shock, and they're throwing mm-hmm. that down there. You know, there's a lot of games that were on the the home console that they're trying to work down to give us that feel and I, I think that they can do it. If anybody can do it, Nintendo can do it. So I'm not the, the main that. thing, sorry to add this now, cause I know you're trying to wrap it up, but I'm just yeah. kind of dawned on me that um, the main difference between a console and a handheld aside from power and graphics and things like that is that it's always quote unquote connected to the internet. Yeah. You always have that either like Wi-Fi connection or something like that. Whereas it, with a handheld, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. And so, that would impact games like Pokemon and Animal Crossing in terms of sharing or visiting yeah. each other's towns or things like that. So there are probably features that we didn't really get into there, but just in case people are screaming about, what about the internet? Like leaning yeah. into social, the social side of things, I think is probably the major boost that you would get from putting a 3DS game onto a console. I agree. I agree completely. Um, okay, so next topic comes from our good friend Brendan Myers. What's up, Brendan? King of the Pirates on um, the Twitters. So he says, <coughs> excuse me, um, if we ran Nintendo, if you could combine any games to make one ultimate game on a Nintendo console, what what would games, what games would you combine? Um, for me, it would be taking the Xenoblade Chronicles X, Pokemon, and Pokemon Tournament. He has a very long le- email, but I'm just going to break it down to get the gist of what he's saying here. Um, I would take how the world of Pokemon region Kanto, Kanto, I think it's actually pronounced. Um, I wouldn't know. I don't know. I'm not really even sure. I'm, I'm, still, <laughs> I'm, I'm all new to this Pokemon stuff. Um, but make it huge and vast as Xenoblade Chronicles X, where there is much to explore. Uh, I would then have the ability to play either as a regular Pokemon RPG, play as a Xenoblade Chronicles X, where you move around as you're fighting, it's more of an action-based fighting rather than a turn base where you're going back and forth the typical, um, as in Pokemon Battle, and press the press the buttons when you want to attack because you choose your options, or go into a battle system similar to a Pokemon tournament. Um, and he's basically saying like you're given it the ability to do, play like two or three different ways depending upon how you want to play. You can play traditional or or new style. I think. I want to tweak that a little bit, Brendan, because I feel like you can't give people too many options when it comes to that. I think you have a really good idea here, and I like the idea of like a Pokemon game that's more open world based. I think you go with the Xenoblade Chronicles battle system, and you just you just embrace that. And I think like you give it the open world, you give that Pokemon 
Um, or you give the Pokemon game that the Xenoblade Chronicles X battle system where it's it's a free flowing live action. You could do chain combos. Maybe you throw like two or three Pokemon out at once, and like maybe Pikachu can can work off a of Greninja or, or stuff like that. Like I think that is the is the cool thing. I like that idea. I really do. That's well thought out, man. That's yeah. like that's deep because like I I think of some two games that come together maybe too naturally that. It's not going to be that exciting. Yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. kind of like cannibalizing each other is Animal Crossing and Pokemon. Like I feel like if you yeah. just like went off on an adventure to go catch some Pokemon and you could sell them <laughs> to some. <laughs> You're messed up. <laughs> you would. You would. <laughs> you could have like your basement is like a training arena and then you just like put a middle in a ball. You're not sell right. your balls to you, top. You are not right. You are not right. Um, Man. I'm I'm trying to think of what and I you know the crazy thing is like something will come to me and I think the easiest best way to 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 look at this is when when you look at um, Tokyo Mirage Sessions yeah where of course. they basically took like a Persona game and they mixed it with a Fire Emblem game mm-hmm. and I felt like that was a nice touch to it like you basically got these fire emblem characters that would come back and they were kind of like spirits and it was kind of like if you look at fire or if you look at final fantasy where you get these like big power up uh mm-hmm. you know like these these i forget what they call them in, in, in fire emblem or final fantasy but it's basically when you get this big creature to come up and attack summons summons that's it um so you summon like a creature, and it comes out. That's basically what you're doing with this game: is where you're summoning a fire emblem character to come do a major attack for you. And I felt like that mm-hmm. was perfect how that went. Um, another Made one you that realize I, like the persona lends itself nicely yes. to that. Like just with whatever companion it is, yeah. it's like throw series X in there, and it will probably yeah. like, throw Splatoon in there. Yeah, <laughs> it will probably work. And that's the one that I was kind of thinking about was Splatoon. Like, mm-hmm. what would you do? Like maybe you take a Splatoon and you you mix it maybe with Mario or maybe the answer is to take a Splatoon game and give us that Nintendo feel and I'm I'm glad they didn't do it in the first one mm-hmm. but now with the second one I'm hoping that they dive more into that Nintendo history and go mm-hmm. like hey you can have an, a Mario hat or you can have a Link hat or stuff like that like I thought I think that would be really awesome to have mm-hmm. that type of stuff. Um, you know what? That's and, why and, I really like this question, though, is because he's not only just thought about like we're basically just putting characters in other games. Yeah, but I like that. This is like this is the whole battle system is is incredible. Yeah. So I, shout out to Brendan because I I feel like we're not doing as good a job as you. No, but um, he did. You know, you that's think, that's amazing what he did. Honestly. What do you think about like Mario Party, which definitely needs a shakeup? Like, what if you put some um, instead of the the mini games? Like, what if it was more of a WarioWare type of feel? Where it's just like completely, ra- it's still kind of mini games, but totally random. But if it would feel like a shot in the arm because yeah. it's just so different, so wacky. Or maybe it's even just one of the boards would be a Wario, Wario board, and See, like he kind of takes over. This is what I would like to have happen, <clears throat> and I and I feel like this is it's been done already to some degree, a small degree. But I would like it to be what I would say is I would say an open world game similar mm-hmm. to Xenoblade Chronicles X, similar to what we're getting out of Breath of the Wild. But you ate, you're essentially playing a role playing game, like in in Smash Brawl with subspace. So you're you're basically on this adventure and you're picking up different Nintendo characters along the way, and you're mm. you're building your team based upon like if you go to this town, this town could be the Mushroom Kingdom, and you go in there and you find like. Luigi or Toad, and then you go off into another town, and it's Hyrule, and mm-hmm. you go into Hyrule, and it's this one, and then you go to, you know, Planet Zebs, and you 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 know that's a town. Not I'm and I'm saying town because I'm just saying what it is. You know, maybe that's part of the map, and you go to, to Planet Zebs, and there's Samus, and you can pick her up, and you go to Dreamland, and there's Kirby and like you can acquire this team and maybe there's an ultimate and what you do is you take all the villains mm-hmm. and have them be like the old and maybe there's someone either Koopa or Ganon that's basically pulling all the strings the puppet master per se and that's what you're doing you're having a gigantic role playing game with all your franchises um, and I would do a more traditional turn based role playing game I wouldn't do anything like a Paper Mario 
or anything like that, or, or like a Xenoblade Chronicles where it's free-flowing. Just do a traditional JRPG-style game. Because you look at what they do at Kingdom Hearts with the meshing and all that stuff, and they tie it in this big... Nintendo has that ability to take a game and, and encompass it. And I would probably, honestly, I'd probably go to go to Square and say, mm-hmm. come on board, let's do this together. Let's, you know, let's rekindle this, you know. That's a and, really good idea. And, and go with that aspect. I think I would, that would be the way I would go. Because I feel like the game style that lends the ability to do this is RPGs. Totally. Where like, you're able to sprinkle in elements in yeah. either the, the the world or the battle system. Like, there's so much going yeah. on that you could go like, yes, this is the nod to the game X yes. or whatever. Because if you took Mario and made a Zelda game out of Mario... I just don't feel like that works. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like it's it's as cool to, to go. Although now that I'm saying that, that'd be kind of cool, like a top a Mario down and a Zelda game to take a Mario world and just drop it into a top down, and then like you could get, get fireballs and that would be your weapon and, <laughs> and you could jump like on, that, you could jump on Koopas and that would be kind of cool, man. Mm-hmm. I think I might like that. That would be that'd be one I definitely buy. I mean. When you think about it, that's how you do certain le- like certain levels, especially in the 3D games, where yeah. you get a little B, and that's in that level you're gonna have to use the B power up yeah. to, to buzz your way up. Uh, that's kind of cool. Top. I kind of like that. That could be interesting. It feels like I feel like we almost skip it because it would almost be too on the nose. We're like, okay, what do we what do we do? We we gotta go past Mario and Zelda, but because Mario RPGs is a thing, so you kind of yeah. go. That was, a, but I like you, your idea. Kind of takes that to the next level of yeah. Just ex, just explode it and call yeah. it Nintendo Hearts. Yeah, something like that. Something that two point eight. Like, yeah, nine <laughs> or just call it Nintendo two point eight remix HD Turbo graphics. Yeah, that's seven eight whatever. I think so Greg would probably know. I feel like the best the best answer to all this is what Brendan is saying because I think he nails it honestly with all this. So yeah, way to take the best answer, Brendan. Yeah, thanks, Brendan. You, yeah. you, you took my... I, this real. was my answer, honestly. I had it written down. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, three yeah, weeks ago, I, I was like, Brendan is going to ask this question. Here's my answer. And he totally... But let us know, finger. guys. Like, let, like, I'm sure we've missed something, and I'm yeah. sure by the, by later on today, we'll be like, ah, I should have thought of whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah let's let's get that. Yeah, what would you guys do? What, what, game, what games would you mesh to create a different game? And basically, like, you're going to take one theme and one style and mesh them together. And what would you come up with? Um, let us know. You can tweet us at if we ran Nintendo. Sean, that is all. Yeah. Okay. Aw. <laughs> that went quick, man. I know. That now feels, i got to do chores. That feels like an hour flew up. by. It know. always does, buddy. I know. So that is all. Thank you guys for watching us. Listening to us, check us out at We the Nerdy, the best place to check us out. Um, Andrew is doing amazing things over there with that website. Seriously, you guys got to go check out the website, check out the other articles, everything. We the Nerdy.com. Every Wednesday night, this podcast will air. Now we do video and audio, same day, same time. There's a little bit of a delay. I put the audio up first, and then maybe like 30, 40 minutes later, the video goes up. But that's just uploading issues. That's nothing to do with anything else. Um, if you want to subscribe to us on iTunes, that would be awesome. It would be really great if you left us a rating. Five star would be awesome. But if you don't yeah, like us... if you us, don't do five star, then don't leave a rating. If, if, actually. You don't, if you don't like us, that's fine. If you hate us and you want to give us a one, I I, I can respect your decision. To, if, to, you're, to, if you don't have something nice to say... Don't Bobby. say it at all. <laughs> Don't say nothing. That's it. So, what do I want to say today? I'm out. Okay. Be ready. No, no, no. You said I'm ready. The first thing you said was I'm ready. That was the first thing I did one like today. You said ready. I said all right. Give me two minutes and I'll fire up. Well, I'll be ready. That's what you said. No, but I'll be ready is what you, I meant. You are an absolute mess. I'm tired.
<laughs> I'm tired of you being but, late all the time. What do you mean? I have eight minutes. You told me you were ready eight minutes ago. I thought you were just making sure I was awake, in which well, case... Well, that was original a while ago, which... Oh, that's not... <clears throat> yeah, I'm just... <laughs> you are... You are... I bought Oh, you're lucky I love you. <laughs> what are you upset about? Now you get to play your know. Animal Crossing. I'm upset. I stopped watching Suicide Squad. That's why I'm upset. You started watching it? I stopped watching it because uh, yeah. you were ready. That's, yeah. what you, that's what you told me. You said I'm ready. You should, you should pretty much never assume that I'll be ready early. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I will, never, yeah. I will never assume that again. I'll be ready on time. Okay. Very, I've been very close here. That's fine. Now we're in the pantry. I'm going to get some uh... Hey, do you want to see... you want to see stuff? How do I feel? Oh, how do I feel? Camera now. Let's see. Do what? Look at all our stuff. I know. I, I already saw all this. Chelsea uh, Chelsea showed me. I got, a, guys. I got a sneak peek of all this because she was showing me everything. That is amazing. She's good. She did very good, dude. She so this was all from my this was all from my twenty eighth birthday. Hang on. A lot of this stuff, right? Yeah, so I'm like, that's when I decided I needed to marry her. So Listen, send me a piece of that cake, would you, bud? Oh sure. <laughs> I'll save it. I'll I'll freeze it. Yeah, bring it to New York with you. Oh man, that's coming up. That's next week. Can you baby. believe it? Next week. Fuck, that's crazy. How cool is that gonna be? I think I'm going to go a little nuts. I do too. I think I'm with you. How's, how's Tobalicious? Is that later today? That was, I already did that. I did it with, uh. When did you start? Dude, seven o'clock in the morning, man. I get up at set. I get up at five. Seven o'clock we record with Toby. Did you go to bed at eight? I went to bed at like nine last night. Dude, I was, I've been sick. So I've been like. Which I'm sick now, which I'm probably going to be a little... By the time the show's done, I'm going to be dying. That's why I wanted coffee, because my throat's raw as hell. I woke up with a headache. That's why I was kind of chugging water here, like, as if I was drinking all night. I get hangovers. I haven't had a drink in two years. That's that's probably why you're getting hangovers, because you haven't been drinking. That's good, though. Yeah, maybe. That's good you haven't drank in two years, though. It's maybe probably, I should be drinking. I, see, I'm the type of guy that, like, I can go on, like, a one-month binge... And just get drunk like all the time, and then never touch a drink again for five years. Yep, I've always been that yeah. way. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> this is crazy. This, Isn't this fun? This is fun. This is lovely. My Shovel Knight Amiibo here still from my Nintendo dads. I, I listened to that. Justin, Justin, I am. Justin Masson calling us the white trash uh, or the trailer park trash mobile. I thought he was thinking of Edmonton. No, he was talking about mobile. He was calling us, he was calling if we ran Nintendo, the mobile home park he didn't pick up of podcasting. Yeah, well, you missed that part. Cause I, didn't you see the tweet I sent? I saw that. No, I'm just referring to it. But the thing of it is, is like he says that, but he's the one that can't even keep an internet connection to be able to podcast properly. How many times have you dropped in that show? Oh, dude, you have no idea. He's like a third world country over there. Why can't I see you? Oh, hold on. There we go. See me? Yeah, I can see you now. I just turned my camera on. For some reason, they shut the camera off. <clears throat> Let me just check something. Make sure here. Uh, Chelsea's a I can't hear you though. Is your microphone on? Can you hear me now? Yeah. There we go. That explains a lot. I still got sleep in my eyes. Chelsea's awake. Is that what you said? Yeah, she's awake and tweeting. Oh, good God! Tell her to put the tweeter down. Oh, she should go back to bed. Yeah. We're up, we're up late. 
playing Borderlands. I figured you were up late. Um, <clears throat> I gotta tell you, I think that Warner Brothers should not be able to make another DC movie for the rest of their lives. <laughs> no, because uh, you know what, man? I watch. I'm watching Suicide Squad, and I'm watching the the director's cut. It's mm-hmm. amazing, dude. They cut all oh, the good I stuff out, think. man. Mm-hmm. They did the same thing to, to Batman v Superman. Like, all the pertinent information is gone. Dude, there is so much Joker stuff that they cut out of this movie. And it's good? It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, as a, as a fan of Batman, as a fan of the Joker, like, Jared Leto kills it, dude. Like, they, they mm-hmm. screwed it up. There's so much stuff that you miss. And it, there's this whole dynamic going on between Harley and him. And you don't realize how much they're actually interacting the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Back and forth. It, dude, it just blows my mind. I, I'm like, whoever is in charge over there should be taken out back, beat within an inch of their life, and then shot. Like, this, it's ridiculous, man. It, I can't believe how much they messed that movie up. And I, and I and the thing of it is is like I wasn't that type of person that walked out of that movie not enjoying it. I did enjoy Suicide Squad, but seeing the director's cut, I enjoyed yeah. it that much more. Like, and the same thing with Batman v Superman. Like, did you, you buy know, it? I bought it on uh, iTunes last night. Mm. So Tony How and I were, is that on iTunes? It's twenty bucks. That's not bad. Yeah, well, I have Apple TV, so. I buy mm. all my movies now through iTunes, and then whenever we're just sitting there, we just click it up on Apple TV and just start watching it. That is nice. Yeah, Mark Is, it, is there any way to... Is Apple TV the only way to do that? Well, yeah. Like yeah. To, to watch your things that you own on iTunes? Yeah. Other yeah. than connecting your computer kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That yeah. sucks. They should have an app. Uh, Apple's they want kind to sell of it, like real... They sell their hardware, right? Yeah. No, well, they just want to be in their world. They want to be in their bubble. Mm-hmm. Like, I bought this adapter hoping I could play my NES Mini Classic on my... And I can't. Oh shoot! Apparently, it's just out. It's just output of the monitor. There's no input in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, that sucks. Like, I, so I'm gonna try to hook it to uh, my laptop here. Bobby, I think I've completely decided against it. I think you made a good good choice. I'm not. I'm not feeling it. I just said against. Is that a gain? I told you. I told you, Chris Jericho. I I'm like trying to it. Think of I like what he's he he does say again never he again does, never again yeah, yeah. against it That's I, right. I feel like i say I like that it. too you do say it like him i no but i say both you do i say a lot of words different ways i you say, say root yeah and you, route. yeah well i say root i never say route well no no it's not true i say route if i'm talking about a street i'll say route yeah like but paper, paper but route. it's funny because we have it's funny because when we have so let's say we're going to a, a particular grocery store, it's a number, right? So we say mm-hmm. I say route number two hundred or route two hundred, but if I'm talking about a road, I say route two hundred. Okay, like, it's weird. I don't know why it is like that. Like it's yeah, yeah. Um, let me pull up my show notes here. Uh, what are we talking about today, Bobby? Let's see, Bobby. we are talking about. We got um, Mason's question. Mm-hmm. Um, which I gotta look at these questions because I I've been so busy at work, dude. I really haven't had a chance to like really dip my brain into this stuff. The best thing oh, is that we're okay. so great at it, then it doesn't even. Well, I don't know about great, but good, solid. I'll take it. <laughs> um, okay. Amiglos. Yeah. Have you ever seen if this we stuff? Ran into... This is an Amiglo here. Now, this is when he first started, and I don't feel like these were his best. Um, on this one, if I put it on my gamepad, this lights up. This little piece Oh, that's here, cool. It lights up. But he did better ones where, like, he's got Bowser, where his mouth lights up, and it's fi- it looks like fire coming out. That's sweet. And then he did, like, um, he did one with, uh, I think it was Mewtwo. Oh, no, 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 no. He did one with Ness, with, like the PK Fire thing. Oh, sweet. But then he had like um, the, the the fire like lights up and stuff. Like he does mm-hmm. really good stuff, dude. He's really, really good. But oh, he like he, awesome. he showed me one time like he has to take the whole thing apart, right? 
mm-hmm. and then like drill up the body. Like if he wanted, if he wanted Luigi's hat to glow, he would have to pull this whole thing apart and with a with a Dremel drill up the body and stuff to run wiring up. Holy shit! Put like an LED light in the hat and then hook mm-hmm. it to the and then he'd have to there's hook it to battery. the NFC chip. No, there's no battery. Oh. He hooks it to the NFC. Oh, that's so smart. So then when it when he when you plunk it down, it lights up. Come on, yeah. that's amazing. It, I, it, it, dude, he's a botanist. So he's a scientist, you know what I mean? So he's a scientist, and it's like, he's, he's dude, he's smart. He's very smart. And poison ivy over there. He pretty much, yeah, yeah. So, are you, ready? <laughs> you ready to jump into this? Poison ivy. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's do this. What is up, everybody, and welcome to episode 34 of If We Ran Nintendo.